Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Bob Stewart. Ooh, I got my friend Via Williams here. Via, how you doing? Hi, I'm here. I'm super excited to have you here today, Via. And, you know, I, I asked you to do this uh, for a couple of reasons. We're going to talk open houses today, and you're going to share with with the group here, the, the plan that you guys have used at open houses for a while now, it's it's led to a lot of a lot of transactions, a lot of closings in your business. This is near and dear to my heart, Via, um, for, for two reasons. The first reason is we have some pretty cool tools inside of Brevity that people can use for open houses. And and you know, we talked before obviously about the class, and I was asking you, hey, do do, do you highlight it? And you do. And and not yeah. because it's because you guys use that tool, mm -hmm. so we're, they'll they'll get to see it. A lot of the, the folks on here are Brivity clients, and they'll have this tool kind of at their disposal. The second reason why th this is kind of near and dear to me is my mom and Via, you know my mom. She yep. really built like her business in the beginning on open houses, and a lot of you guys have heard us tell the story. She did 26 open houses in the month of December of 2016, which led her to like eight pendings in January and seven pendings in February. Uh, and it really just kickstarted her career in real estate. And so, you know, I, I doubt that she was doing them with the precision that you guys, that, you, that you're going to teach about today and kind of all of these strategies, but it was very successful for her. And it really led to, again, just, just a great start to her real estate career. So I'm excited. Um, listen, here's what I'd like to do, Via. I'm going to okay. turn the floor over to you. I'm going to yep. mostly get out of your way, but folks that have been on these before, they know that uh, I have a big mouth. And so um, I'm going to pop in if anybody has questions. And in fact, before we get started right now, why don't you guys go find that questions area in the GoToWebinar control panel. And what I would like you to do is type into there for me and tell me like in the last month, how many open houses have you personally done? Or maybe if you, you know, if you represent a team, like how many has your team done? Like, I'm, I'm just curious, what is, because like Via said, you know, 100% of real estate agents at some point in their career are doing or have done an open house, right? So how many are you guys doing right now? How many, so we've got like, June's oh, I love eight. this. We've got some zeros. This is you guys who have done zero. I cannot wait. I, I hope you have notepads out. I'm so excited. One. Awesome. Six, four, nine. Who's the winner right now? Ten is in the clubhouse right now as the leader, Elizabeth. Um, you know, and lo lots of people believe. But, oh, there we go, Rachel with twelve. A bunch of you guys up there in that ten or twelve. That's fantastic. Um, you know, a lot of people in that four or five or six. You know, one a weekend type of things, right? We see a lot of that. Um, I, I'm gonna guess that Brooke hasn't done 113. I'm gonna guess that's either 11 or 13. Um, still impressive, Brooke. Still impressive. I don't know. Okay, cool. So again, you guys, um, I have you do that so you know where to go as we get moving in here and you have a question. I'm going to do my best to interject your questions on VIA as they make sense. We'll definitely have some time at the end where, you know, we just, as long as VIA can kind of stay around, we'll answer as many questions as we can get to. Um, all right. So VIA, I'm going to step out of the way. Um, All right. Actually, maybe I'll introduce you real quick. Guys, so v Via Williams is the director of growth for the Ben Kinney companies, which includes, you know, our software division and all of our brokerages. And um, she she has really for us just been this this leader that stepped in and been somebody that's that's rallied our brokerages and, and our sales teams to, to just better results. Right. And we're all about results here in the Ben Kinney company. So I'm super excited to have you here via. I'll get out of your way. Um, take it yeah. away. Thank you. Yeah, and and I appreciate that. I'm the director of growth for our, for our brokerages, so I'm the essentially the general manager of ten uh, real estate offices that the Ben Kinney Companies owns from Bellingham down to Tacoma, six Keller Williams franchises. So yeah. And, and but before that, and what's really important for you guys is I've been a realtor for 17 years, and I started a team in 2013. And this class, the origins of this class, it's called Open House 101. I uh, started getting busy and I started bringing listings on. And right around 2013, 
I started having agents, you know, you know, doing open houses for me and beyond substituting for myself, that had not been something I had done a lot in a purposeful way. If I were sick or I was on vacation, I might've had an agent do an open house for me. But when I started a team and I started bringing on a ton of listings and my team members started bringing on a ton of listings, I started realizing that, you know, I needed to kind of go from E to P or from this, just go do an open house to teaching them a method. This is what happens when you have a real estate team. You realize you have to kind of teach processes, right? And teach scripts and, and everything. So I sat down with a gal named Lacey Paulo, who is the account manager at Team Builder. And Team Builder is one of the largest real estate teams in the nation. They do about 250, 300 million in volume. And all they do is new construction builders, hundreds and hundreds of units a year. And Lacey was really struggling with having agents come and sub on their sites and just not doing a good job. So Lacey and I sat down together and spent an afternoon and drafted Open House 101. And I started using this as onboarding for my team. It became part of our team training. In the last, whatever, 2013 to now, what is that, six years, this class has morphed and developed and it's turned into the foundation of my team. Uh, I would say in an average uh, year, we do 20 to 30% of our business doing open houses. And um, up until last year, I had a 1.5 to $1.7 million commission business. Uh, it's, it's ramped down now that I'm working for Ben. <laughs> Not in a bad way. I love what I'm doing. But we don't do that volume anymore. But we still do 20 to $30 million a year. And a ton of our business comes from open houses. So what would happen is I would learn something or we would start adopting a new skill and I just would keep putting it into the class. And then when I took this role, I started teaching it at all of our local uh, offices and it, it just, it took off and all of our Facebook pages started blowing up with agents saying, I just sold a house because of Open House 101 and I use via script and I used our methods and I, I realized how much it was helping people. And I also realized how much we have amazing open house classes in real estate. And I also feel like we don't have a lot of classes that teach the basics. So I wanna prep you. This is very, very basic. This is rudimentary how to do an open house from cradle to grave. Open House 201 gets way more in the weeds on sales uh, conversions and, you know, what, what we can do is, is some high level long game strategies. Today, this class, which is typically live, it's about a two hour class. So I'm going to give you a ton of content today. Um, and I don't know, Bob, you're, I'm happy to have you share the slide deck if that helps everybody. Um, with that said, we're going to kind of go through a ton of content. I am not going to get distracted and look at the questions window. So if you guys have questions, I urge you to pepper them in as you as, as they come to you. And Bob will break in and he will ask me if he wants to interrupt because it's just too much for me to focus no, on that. No, window. he doesn't ask. He just jumps in. He just Perfect. jumps in. Perfect. Absolutely. All right. So that's the background of the class. So. Here, here's the deal, you guys. We're gonna go through seven, the seven steps of a successful open house. And I'd like you, if you wouldn't mind, to get out of some judgment space and to look at this as, as a learning experience because you're gonna say, when I talk about some of this stuff, like via, honestly, am I wasting my time having you talk about signage? Everything I say, you guys, is proven. This is literally from years, boots on the ground, out on the field, selling a ton of houses doing this. So everything I'm gonna talk about, don't blow off as being so basic. Even if you've been doing this for 17 years like I have, my hunch is some of the stuff you, you just haven't thought about before. And that's kind of my goal, right? That, that by sharing all the basics in 101, it kind of brings us all back to, oh, I should be purposeful about everything I do, right? So we're gonna go through seven steps of an open house. Oh, this is fun, Bob. A little tech okay, fun. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yay. Here we go. So, so again, don't blow this off as obvious because what's the number one goal of an open house? This is where I wish I was staring at the chat window because then you guys could all answer for me. But what's the number one goal of an open house, right? It's to sell the house. We all know that. This is number two is what I really want you guys to think about. Really think about what I'm about to say. The second goal is to get leads, right? That's what you're all going to say. The second goal. Oh. Leads, right? Okay. Yeah. That's not, but what is a lead, you guys? This is what, if you take nothing else from this webinar, when I'm about to press the button and number two comes up, 
I want you to let it absorb and sink in. What is a lead? I will tell you right now, a lead is an appointment. Uh, that kind of sunk in a little bit for me. I'm not going to lie. A lead is an appointment. You need to walk in and change your mind frame right now. Most of you guys are walking in an open house and what you're saying is, well, if I can get a bunch of names and numbers to follow up with, that's a successful open house. It's okay. I said it too. I'm not judging anybody. I did that for years, right? But what happened is I started realizing that the best leads were the leads that we actually met with right after the open house or set a tangible appointment with. And my world changed. When I changed my mindset and I started going to open houses and saying, okay, my goal is one appointment. If I do 40 open houses this year and I get one appointment at every open house, my entire world changes. My yeah. life will change because I will at least, look at your mom, Bob. I will at least convert some of them if I can make an appointment. And if I walk in that door and I know I have two or three hours to do nothing else but make an appointment with one person, I'm winning. Because once I have an appointment, I have I have a 70% chance for me, even if it's 50% conversion, where, you know, if you're a newer agent, whatever your conversion is, when you are eyeball to eyeball with someone who you've already met and who already agreed to meet with you, you probably have an 80% or 90% conversion, right? And via somebody that's at that point where they're out driving around neighborhoods yep. looking at houses. Yep. Right. And they want to make an appointment with you. It's literally, you guys, if there's nothing else you learn, I want you guys to walk and start saying affirmations on your way to your open house and say, I'm going to get an appointment. I'm going to get an appointment. And sometimes when I'm texting with my agents, I'll push them to get two, depending on the situation. So I don't want to gloss over this. I know it's kind of like, duh, Via, what? Okay. Hi. I just got on a webinar about open houses and you're telling me the goal is to make an appointment. Yes. If you really, really let this sink in, this is probably the biggest game changer. And I'm going to show you the script that's going to get you the appointment. Okay, so here we go. Let me see here. Uh, that's number three. All right, we, we, we do want to get their contact info, put it in brevity, and I'm going to tell you how to do that. Perfect. Seven components. Number one, research the property. Number two, how to set up for an open house. Number three, the critical path of sales. Number four, client communication. Number five, traffic report. Traffic reports will change your world. If you are an agent right now that is on this webinar who does open houses for listing agents, you don't quite have your own listings yet, I'm gonna tell you how you're gonna be getting phone calls before listings even go live to get the hottest open houses ever, okay? Traffic reports will help you. Etiquette and safety, all right? So number one, you know, we want to know um, what the best open house is. Is it a new listing? Is it a house that just had a price reduction? Is it on a good in a good location? Remember, a great house to buy maybe isn't on a busy street, but a great house, you know, open house is on a busy street, right? So if it's up a long country lane and it's been on the market for six weeks, I think we all know that's not the best open house on the planet, right? Okay, this is really important to me please go visit the house that week. I prefer my agents to choose their open houses on Mondays if they can. And if they have to start hitting up other agents to get open houses, you know, it can take till Tuesday, sometimes even Wednesday. But the earlier in the week you can, it's possible. And then they all block out time during the week to go preview the house that they're gonna hold open as well as uh, any neighboring, you know, listings. I definitely want you to talk to the listing agent or their listing coordinator. And some of the questions I want you to ask him is, you know, what information do, do they think you need to know, right? What are the, you know, um, what are the common questions you guys are getting? What are people calling you asking? Is, you know, are they asking you about if the house is on a green belt? Are they asking you about property line? Are they asking you about homeowners dues? You know, are they asking you about the vacant lot in front of them that is that it could be built on? So whatever it is, just kind of talk to the listing coordinator or the agent and just find out what those common questions are. I also think it's really great to kind of learn what the common objections are. Like, you know, if the house is on a freeway, okay, that's a common objection. How are you guys handling that? How should I handle that? And I just try to get in really good dialogue uh, with the agent. The, we know, the listing agents know, and if you are the listing agent listening, just kind of, you know, you already know. You already know like what the important things are and what the objections are. Builder story, I really feel strongly that if you're gonna go hold a new construction or a new build, whatever you call it in your area, open house that you know something about the builder enough to make the the consumer make your customer feel comfortable with that builder like 
yeah, you know, it's an LLC, but who the partnership is, they've been around for 30 years locally and, you know, they partnered with blah, blah, blah. And these are some of the houses they've built. You know, the more you know about the builder and can make the customer feel comfortable, the better. And then um, the big, big crucial thing is, I get this all the time, you know, I don't want you to actually know everything, right? I don't want you to actually know everything. Here's a really good example. What are the common questions? I'm going to open up questions really quick here. What are the common questions when we list condos or houses and homeowners associations? Just toss in the questions really quick. What are the common questions you guys get? Can you have pets? Are there homeowners HOAs? Fees. Yep, pets. Uh, rental caps, right? Rental caps. Uh, what do the homeowners fees include, right? Maintenance fees include. Um, are, you know, God, there's so many things. Like, can you paint the house purple? Right. Perfect. Like, you know. Um, how are the neighbors? How are the neighbors? Jody, we can't talk about the neighbors. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, are there any special assessments? Okay, I do want you to know those basic things, you guys. I want you to understand why, you know, I don't want you to look dumb. I want you to look like a smart agent who's done your research. What I don't want you to know is everything. Why do you think that is? I'm, I've got the chat box open. Why do you think I don't want you to know everything? Because I want to have a reason every once no. in a while to have to call Kathy, someone back. I don't really so. think it's liability, although I think that's valid. I think that's a good a good answer from a so, like a solid real estate agent would say that. I love that you said it. It's reason to follow up, Chad. Ding, ding, ding. Brian, Rick, absolutely. Like, oh no, Rick says nobody likes that. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yes, I want you guys to know enough to sound like you know what you're talking about, but I don't want you to know everything because I want you to get back to them. So when we're doing that walkthrough with them, you know, you, you know, just enough to be dangerous, you are not the expert on that house, right? I mean, you, you know, even as a listing agent, we shouldn't be expected to know some of the finer point details. And I am constantly looking to find out what I can do as a hook to get back to them. We'll talk about registration in a minute, but there's a couple different ways to register and I like to layer my registration. And one way is, you know, I might have them register when they first come in, but I'm also in dialogue with them and I'm kind of doing a registration as I go. And, and this is a great way to, you know, kind of have everybody get back, you know, have a reason to get back to them. I want you to learn the basics about the area, you guys. I definitely want you to know what the schools are that goes with this, you know, listing. I want you to know the names of the local parks. You know, I think we've all been in that situation where, where we go and hold that open house and people know more about the neighborhood than we do. <laughs> you know, you're like, uh, oh yeah, that park. Oh, the purple house around the corner from, you know, oh yeah, right. And we, we really don't, right? So I want you to know enough and I want you to kind of understand, understand the area. Definitely go preview the other listings. They're gonna ask you about them. Definitely pull them up, right? So, so do enough research that you show up and you have what I call confidence through competence. By the time you walk in that door, you're feeling really comfortable and confident in your own skin about doing that open house, especially you newer agents, you guys. When you're a newer agent, I think sometimes we we have, you know, we lack confidence. It's totally natural and normal. And, and I want you, this is a great way, confidence through confidence is the best way to fast track your career. And what I mean by that is learn about your subject matter and the more, you know, competent you get in a particular subject, the more confident you get. And this is a really fast track way to get confidence in, in real estate, I think. So that's it on property research. I'm going to keep moving on um, to um, set up. Here's the deal. Um, you are all seeing two signs, but you are also seeing Clorox wipes and balloons, aren't you? <laughs> all right. I am like, I have what I call DHBs and D DHBs are deeply held beliefs. So I'm going to prep you right now. I have a bunch of DHBs on real estate signage. I'm an, I'm a nightmare. I have, I am, I am like the sign Nazi <laughs> because it's changed my world. So a couple things. Number one, if your open house is from one to four on a Sunday, what does on time mean? I'm going to open up the chat box. What does on time mean? Ready, there, signs up. What does on sign, what, what does on time mean? Oh, I love you guys. You're so good. Andrew, <laughs> get the prize. Andrew Gibson. I like to say 1245. So if the open house starts at one, I'm going to close that up again. If the open house starts at one, 15 minutes ahead of time. Has anybody here had this super fun experience? Ugh, it's the worst of being late to an open house or like right on time and everybody's waiting there. Oh, there's nothing worse. And once you go through that once, you will never want to be late again. 
So if on time means 1245, when do we need to start putting signs out? At, at 1230? No, 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 no. We need to start putting signs out probably at 12, right? So what that means is that morning showing, let's call this a Saturday. Let's just say this is on a Saturday. I don't want to. If you have all those morning buyers on a Saturday morning, which we all do, what does this mean at your 10 o'clock appointment when you are supposed to show someone who's slower than molasses six or eight houses? Okay. Remember, you need to backtrack this and you need to manage that expectation. So I started getting really good at the scripts like, hey, you know, hey, Sally and John, um, we've got a list of six houses. I have got a hard stop at 1145. So I just want to go through this list again. What are the three most important houses to you? I want to go see those first. And if we're running late, we're going to have to shelve the other three. And then we go to the next house, right, where they took 20 minutes of video and they're never going to buy it. Then we go to the next house and I'd be like, all right, we have time for two more houses, you guys, because remember, I have a hard stop of 1145. And I would just keep peppering that in because I think a lot of the times we're late because we're just stacking up our appointments and our buyers before then, right? Anyone relate to that? Anyway. Um, Okay, how many signs, I got the thing opened again, how many signs is appropriate to put out? As many as you can. I, Zach, I love Zach. Zach twice with an exclamation point, this is great. Okay, five to 15, well, yeah, it is right in front of you. I was waiting for someone to say that. Um, Ryan Josh says, Joshua every wins. sign Joshua I have. Wins. You know, you cannot put out too many signs. There is a reason builders hire people to put out 150 signs every weekend. There is a reason. In this day and age of high tech, and you know, when you're you're all saying, here's the bubble that you're all saying in your head, this is so basic. When are we getting to the script? Let me tell you guys something. If you are taking three hours away from your family or watching the game on TV or going to the beach or whatever it is you want to do, let's at least get you a whole bunch of traffic so that you can sell some homes, right? I mean, otherwise it's just wasted time. If you're gonna be there, let's get you good and busy. And this is what I know. The more high tech we get and the more instant gratification we get, listen carefully. Our consumer and our customer needs an easy button, you guys. They're getting an easy button on everything. When we can press a button and Uber's here in five minutes, our consumers need an easy button. They need a zillion signs. They literally need signs in their face, making them turn left and right to get to your open house. The more we get into tech, the more low tech we have to get. I, I swear to God, you know, I know they're going to come because of your app. And I know you're going to get a certain amount of people because it's going to be a hot new listing. I promise you, if you do nothing else, but you put out 15 or 20 signs this weekend, if you've just been putting out five, you will get more people and a story and, and you'll, you'll, you'll get on the brevity mastermind and you'll go, Oh my God, she was right. Because it, it happens every time. My traffic literally reflects how many signs I have out, right? Some open houses are better than others. I can't promise you're going to have great turnout, but what I can promise is if anyone was going to come to your open house, they will come the more the signs are there. Does that make sense? So that's a really, really big deal to me. That means, you're gonna to have to get there early and stay late. It sucks. I think we can all agree the worst part of real estate on the planet is putting up signs. Actually, you know what's worse? The worst part is taking him down. Oh my God. It's like four to 5 p.m. I'm in Seattle. It's like pouring rain and it's pretty much dark. Literally, and I'm all dressed up. There's nothing worse than taking real estate signs down. Nothing. Unless you have <laughs> unless you have an appointment or two, right? If you got an appointment well, or two. Well, we're gonna talk about that. Here. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Then you leave them up and, and, and we'll go. Anyway, okay. Uh, you can look at a map and look at key intersections. Really important, put your arrow directionals before the turns on, on the correct side of the road, where the where the lane is that the car is driving. So in an intersection, I'd much rather have you, you know, have two signs, one going each way, a little before each turn. Okay, when we go to set up, I do not park in the prime parking spot. I unload my stuff and I either park in the garage if I can, or I go and park on the street you know, a couple car lengths down. I really want to leave the great spots for my guest, right? When I get to the house, if, you know, for whatever reason, there is an Amazon box or cobwebs and it's gross, you know, I go, I go all American beauty and I take a broom out and I sweep and I make sure everything's put away. I mean, curb appeal is really important and I, it is nothing is beneath me to get an open house ready to go. So I, I do it all. Um, interior prep, um, all lights on 
all interior doors open. Please put toilet seats down, please. Uh, if it's appropriate for weather, turn on all the fireplaces, put on all the heated floors. Definitely love it when audio and home theater is on. I prefer a Pixar um, movie. I, I always tell the story though, and we don't have a lot of time for stories because I'm just kind of cramming all this down your throat, but I sold Kevin Durant's house. And so, um, we played kevin durant has like this disney movie i swear to god i must have seen that movie 25 times like we would play that movie on loop for open houses but don't play kevin durant's movie play like a pixar <laughs> um all the interior doors open we said that um one of the things i i didn't mention about signs by the way i'm just looking at my notes Have you guys notice how apartment communities invest a whole bunch of money and time in balloons Balloons and tea toppers. Tea toppers are those um, messaging things that go on top of a boards. There's been a lot of research into this. People believe you are there if they see tea toppers and if they see balloons. Consumers have gotten a little jaded with our sandwich boards, <laughs> with our open house signs, because so many people have been leaving them up and your corner deli leaves theirs up for five years in a row chain to the pole, right? So they don't always believe that that there's someone there. When you give them like a balloon or a tea topper, the research shows they believe that, that, that psychologically they're more inclined to go and see you. It feels more like an event and they trust that someone's actually there. So I just kind of want to remind you to freshen up and add things like that to your signage or the, the trade-off for that is to just put a ton of signs out where there's no question that you're there. What, everybody keeps asking, what's a tea topper? That's just yeah, something that would go topper. on top of the open house sign saying like open Sunday, something like that. Yeah, and I usually teach this class live. I, I apologize, I don't have a slide for it, but what it is is it's that, we call it Corex, it's that plastic cardboard and it and it's shaped, um, it's like, oh, I don't know, it's long and skinny and, and you just drop it on top of your sandwich board. Now, for those of you guys who are in markets who don't use sandwich boards like we do in Seattle, we use a, a wooden sandwich board. Um, it wouldn't work. You would just want to go with balloons. For those of you uh, in, in, you know, my area and in areas that use those sandwich boards, you can just buy them online or, you know, here we can buy them at our local MLS. And they just say things like new listing, open house one to four, price improvement, hot beverages, cold beverages, you know, whatever it is you want to say. It doesn't really matter, honestly, what's on them. But um, it's just an extra messaging that make people believe that that there's an event happening that day. If that makes sense. I googled sign frame toppers, and and there's uh, you know lots of examples of, okay. of what those say and and are. All right, so um, we're gonna move on. So number three, this is um, where I'm gonna teach you the script that has really changed my world. Th this script that that I'm gonna teach you in a minute, it's a really funny story behind it, but it has made me probably now at this point. If you include all the agents in our brokerages, which, you know, that's their business, they're making, this is probably like a seven figure script and you're gonna laugh really hard when you hear it, but. Um, all right, so let's talk about the critical path of sales at an open house. And some of this is gonna be really obvious and some of this will be new to you. You know, th the first part of that is that initial greeting. And, and I really like to do a super quick rapport building. You know, I'm super uncreative with this. And so typically it's going to be a University of Washington or a Washington State Cougar hat that they have on or like whatever, or it's going to be weather related because I'm just that person. Oh my God, my husband's a Cougar. Or, oh my God, my whole family went to the UW, you know, go Huskies. Whatever it is I'm going to say, I mean, it's probably going to be really dumb. And then, and it works and it's fine. And you know, oh, look at this weather. It's great. In Seattle, we talk about the weather all the time right Bob I mean like it's yeah. like the weather is like a really big topic you know it's is not it raining? raining is it not raining yeah I know so um so I do like kind of one of my go-to questions as I pivot is well how's the home search going and then I kind of find out at that point if they're like oh I'm just a neighbor great are you interested in finding out the value of, of this house so you can learn more about the value of your house you know then I'll kind of start pivoting Ben uh, Kinney has a great script that he uses is, you know, we find people come to open houses for one of two reasons, and that's that they have a home to sell or they have a home to buy. Which one are you? So I, I don't use Ben's script per se. There have been times where once I do my initial rapport, I'll roll into that. I wouldn't roll right into that with an initial rapport. So just, just be sure that you do a super quick bonding with them and that you find a common ground. You guys know this. That, that's nothing new, right? 
Um, I really like Ford, you know, as like a quick tool, family, occupation, recreation, or dreams. So if I'm not gonna go to, you know, school or weather, I'm probably gonna go to, do they have a tow of kids with them? Or, you know, do they have no kids? I, you know, I might go into something about their family or um, maybe they have a Microsoft sweatshirt on. I might go, oh, do you work at Microsoft, you know? Whatever it is, you know, recreation, you know, are they wearing a, you know, do they, are they towing a boat behind them, right? Is that important to them? Whatever it is. Um, okay. And then the most important part of real estate, probably one of the most important thing that, that we do, I think, is, is what I call discovery. And I've always felt the best way to do discovery is LP Mama. If you don't know LP Mama, literally LP Mama is its own webinar. LP Mama is, I would say, the foundation to every single real estate interaction I have, whether it's at a dinner party, at an open house, if I'm with my friends at book group, we don't read books, but you know, wine group, uh, I'm kidding. Well, no, I'm not kidding. You know, yeah. but wherever I am, it's always gonna launch into LP Mama. I mean, it's gonna go, I'm gonna naturally go into a discovery analysis so I kind of know where to take the conversation. And that is location, price, motivation. Do they have an agent? You know, where are they in the mortgage process? And what is the last one, Bob? The thing is, every real estate conversation has one goal, and that's to make an appointment. Now, once you're at the appointment, that goal changes to writing a contract. But you know, until that point, our only real goal is to make an appointment, right? So um, one of the things um, that we feel really, really strongly about once we're kind of in that mode is registration, customer registration. You guys, it is not worth the hours you spend if you cannot get them to register, right? And this slide has been on here for a long time, far before Bob had me do a brevity webinar. We used to use something called, is it Open Home Pro or Open House yeah, Pro? Bob? Open whatever. House Pro, I think. Okay, whatever it is. And then we would have to double enter them into our CRM and then they would get another opt-in email. It was just, it was just a pain and, and it wasn't translating. The minute we switched over to brevity last year, th this is probably one of the best features of brevity. Their open house is amazing and what they're doing is they are literally logging themselves directly into your crm bob do you want to kind of describe it you, you probably can describe it a little better to me yeah so um if you guys have a the brevity platform you, you've got a website and all you would need to do is at the open house and like my mom's team a lot of our teams will do this on a kindle or an ipad they'll have a you know it's a 39 dollar stand an iPad. Yeah, so they'll have a stand, $39, 40 bucks on Amazon. They'll put the iPad in the stand, kind of mm -hmm. near the front door. Then you go on the iPad just to your website. You basically find that listing on your website, and then you add forward slash open house to the URL of that, that property. So in this case, she's at you know 59, 14, 18th Avenue, right? She'd pull that listing up on her iPad. She'd add forward slash open house to the end, and then she, the, the, the thing on the left there, it says create open house. She'd fill out the date and does she want a full or a light registration? A light registration's name, email, and phone number. A full registration is gonna ask them some additional information like what's your price range you're looking in? How soon are you looking to buy? Are you working with an agent? Do you have a house to sell? Um, but then we just, we kind of launched that registration page. And now that registration page just sits on our iPad on the stand right there near the front door. And we basically yeah. transition from you know, probably that LP mama script, or maybe we do it a little bit earlier at, maybe it's after Ben's script, you know, but it's basically just, hey, the seller's request that we have, you know, for security purposes, we have everybody sign in who's gonna come through the home today. Um, so if you could just sign in and look, the vast majority, the overwhelming, like up in the 90s, the high night, we'll, we'll have no problem, right? That they're just gonna sign in. But what will happen then, and there's another little thing at the very bottom, a little check mark, and it's checked by default, and we find that about 75% of the people that will register open house will keep that thing checked. But what it'll do is when they register, it'll send that lead into the CRM. If you're using a subdomain, if you're an agent on a team, you would have used your own subdomain to do this. So the lead would immediately get assigned to you. Yep. And then if they kept that box checked, it's gonna start a listing alert for them based on the property they were visiting. So this property here in Seattle at 769, what it'll do is it'll go down 10 and up 10% of the list price. So it'd go down 76,000 and up 76,000. And it will set them up on a listing alert. In this case, it would end up being in Seattle, 
between you know 675 and 815 or something, whatever that plus or minus 10% is. And they would start getting listings from you basically right out of the gates. As a result of having come into your open house and registered, you now have them on a drip campaign with listings similar to the one that they'd visited. Super yeah. powerful stuff. And and Bob, just to just to second that, we have um, we have a couple things we do with our iPad. We actually invested in it might have been like a couple hundred dollars, might have been 150, but we have an iPad stand that 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 secures the iPad onto the stand. It's actually, I think we got it where they sell retail things for stores. So it bolts onto the i onto the stand. They really couldn't take it away. It's it's pretty heavy and cumbersome. It's probably a little too heavy for open houses. So if you have a thirty or forty dollar Amazon stand, I actually would love to see that link if you feel like okay. you can find that link because Absolutely. I would love a cheaper alternative. With that said, it's pretty awesome. Like it's at standing height and they walk, it looks like it should be in a store. Like it, it's kind of ergonomically pointed directly at them. You know, the iPads bolted on there, right? Like it's kind of cool, but it's a little cumbersome. So yeah, you know, I would say this to you guys. Um, 201, we go way more in the weeds on this. Customer registration is a big topic. And I get a lot of questions about this. I don't have your, your question chat box open right now, but Usually at this stage of my class, we break and we go all bunny trailed on registration, which is why I created 201. Here's what I know, a couple things. There's no one way to do this. You know, Bob's right, we, we use all tactics. You know, hey, the seller wants you to register, can you register? But we don't know if they put in Mickey Mouse and then 5551212. So one of the things I started learning over time is that sometimes, because back in the day, you guys, I used paper and pen, I just had little sign-in sheets. Um, cause I'm old. Anytime someone tells you they've been in real estate over 15 years, they're really admitting they're over 40. <laughs> I'm just saying. So anyway, here's the deal. Um, what I like to do is build rapport with them. And what I started finding sometimes is that they started to like me and we started to bond and, and I would, I always try to do a second pass and get their name and number personally, because just in the off chance they wrote Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse on there and they, and they might have regretted it. They didn't know me when they signed in, but they know me now 15, 20 minutes later. And by the way, I have valuable information because I needed to get back to them on stuff, right? Going back to the property research. So that's kind of my my second line of defense is, is whatever you use to come in, you know, for security purposes, the seller wants you to sign in or, hey, can you sign in or or whatever your script is. I always want to try to do a second pass where I'm like, hey, really quick, what did you say your cell phone was again? And okay, and Sally, what's your last name? Perfect. And why don't I just take your email while we're here? Because I just want to be sure that I may have to email that info to you. And so now I personally have their contact information that I'm either typing into my phone or I'm jotting down on something. So I just wanted to kind of throw that in. Someone asked about Ford. It's, it stands for Family Occupation recreation or dreams and it's just designed to be a quick brain um like a reminder for bonding like okay you know if i don't if i'm kind of at a stuck point in a conversation with someone it's probably good for blind dates too you know let, let me jump to the four topics that people kind of it's gravitate kind of neutral topics family occupation like what do you do tell me about your job right you know what do you do for fun that would be recreation and stuff so that's all it is I want to kind of get into the meat now and, and the script that's really changed changed our game. Let me just go down here. Um, so let's briefly talk about the house demonstration. Fun fact, no one really teaches us how to present houses unless we're in new construction. Do we have anyone here that, that is um, has a background in, in working for builders and selling new construction for builders? Let's see if there's anyone on here. Yeah, so Eric does, um, you know, Eric, you guys, the thing with builders is your full-time job as a builder's real estate agent is to do open houses. And I, I really believe that that on-site sales professionals are the best in the business for open houses. I, I really do. Anyone here who has a background in that, you guys are a huge valuable resource. And, and I encourage you guys to maybe teach in your local offices because you guys, you guys do this full-time. That's your job. You have a permanent open house when you're on-site, right? One of the things we talk about is, you know, in this critical path, we start with rapport building, then we go into what I call discovery, and then we go into the house demonstration. And no one really teaches this unless you're in new construction. When we do this in person, I teach you things like don't get in front of people's sight lines, stand behind them and usher them into rooms. 
Um, one of the things I do want to spend a few minutes teaching today because it's really, really important. Oh, and by the way, I like it when we pre-plan the best way to walk through a house. This is this is new construction. I have a new construction background. And, and this is what we learn, you know, how does the builder and or the architect want us to present a house? You know, do not ever steer people in through a garage door. Some houses are kind of designed so that the side door makes more sense. A builder and an architect 100% of the time designs their houses to go through the front door. I'm just telling you, there's no exceptions to that. So start in the front door and, you know, and start that, that presentation in a way that's gonna really framework the house. What we're doing during LP Mama and Discovery is we're learning about people, right? So, you know, when we kind of, you know, get to know someone and one of the, maybe one of the spouses is signing in and we're like, well, you know, tell me, I see you have two kids with you. Do you have any more, you know, that aren't here? Yeah, you know, we have, we have four kids. So we're actually looking for a five bedroom house, which is really hard to find. Oh, that's great. What other features are you looking for? You know, well, we'd love to live in this neighborhood and we'd love to have a three car garage with a shop. And I mean, if everything was perfect, we'd love to have a master bedroom with a view, right? You know, whatever that, whatever that thing is, right? You're doing a needs analysis, right? So that right there just gave me my path of demonstration. Because I know a couple of things. I know number one, they're gonna need a pretty good kitchen for four kids. Number two, I definitely wanna show them the garage because it is a three car garage, right? And number three, I, I wanna show them the master because this master has what you could call a little bit of a view maybe or whatever it is. So that's when we go into micro closes. And that is what I wanna spend just two minutes talking to you about. This is a, again, a new construction um, sales tool that we use all the time. And that is that, you know, I say, great, you know, great, Sally, let, let's go. And, and I start presenting the kitchen. Well, does, would this kitchen work for you guys? You know, we're, say we look through the kitchen and I might say, you know, would this kitchen work for you guys and, and your four kids? Do you think you could fit all the stools around that counter and, and have cereal together and, you know, and all that stuff? And, and they might say, yeah, yeah, it would. I'm like, great. Wait till you see the garage. Because you told me you wanted a three-car garage with a, with a shop, right? Yeah, great. So, you know, you show them the garage and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well would this three car garage work for you guys? Is this what you were visualizing? You know, well, yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. So let's go see the living room, whatever. And then we get to the master and the micro close would be, well, you said you wanted a master with a view and I know your price range is, you know, 700 and this house is 675. This may not be a sweeping view, but would this view work for you? Yeah, you know, I think it might. Great. And then drum roll, please. We go into the script. So here's the deal with the script. Hopefully, hopefully by now, you've done some micro closes if you're at that point. But you can use a script literally the minute someone says, oh, I like the hardwood floors. Like you could use a script and we've used it a million times. You could use it at any point in the process. So I don't want you to feel like you have to wait till you've done 2.5 micro closes, right? With that said, the, the situation I described when we get that one hot lead where that house might actually work for them or where you're bonding and vibing with them or whatever, um, it's really extra effective and you can even use it again after the micro closes. So here's a story about the script. I um, was kind of a solid $10 million volume a year producer for a long time. I was an individual agent at a a local brokerage here in Seattle called John L. Scott. And then um, I just kind of made some um, changes and, and I came over to the brokerage I'm at now, which happens to be Keller Williams. Doesn't matter what brand you're with, you know, listening to this, we, we love you all. And I just happened to move brokerages. And what happened is um, I got exposed to teams. I just, I never even knew real estate teams existed. So in, uh, I was kind of doing like 9.5, 10 million in volume leading up to this. And then in 2013, I, um, I exploded and I went up to like 25 million in, in volume and it was just a crazy year. And I got so busy, I was like, well, I think I, I'm gonna start a team. So I hired my first uh, buyer's agent, December of 2013. And I had never trained anyone in my life on, so you know what, I did this class in 2014, now that I'm thinking about it, because I'd never trained anyone in my life on how to do an open house. I just showed up and did them and got a bunch of business, you know, like, like most of you guys, I just didn't know what I did. So Isabel, so I, I set Isabel up for her very first open house at the beginning of January, and it's this super hot listing in Redmond by Microsoft. And it's like 390,000, and it's cute as a button townhome, it's the listing you know is going to get like 50 groups through, right? You just know it is. And normally I would have done it with her, but I had a kid thing that weekend. I have three kids. I have, you know, a lot going on. 
So she all week long, she's like, Via, you need to tell me how to do an open house. I've never done one. And then, you know, Monday comes, Tuesday comes, Via, when are you going to teach me how to do an open house? Wednesday, th Friday. She's like, Via, <laughs> she like, you know, takes me into my office. Like, you are not leaving this office until you tell me what to do. And I'm like, okay, all right. I don't know, just show up at the open house and sell it. I don't know, Isabel. Okay, fine. So I like sat there for a minute and I go, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, she doesn't know anything. Like she's never done an open house before. And I'm like, you know what? This is my moment. Like, why would I give her a bunch of preconceived notions about names and numbers, right? So I looked at her and I said, okay, here's the one thing you have to do. Anytime someone walks in the door, you need to get them to sign this piece of paper. And you know, I go, it's, I'll print it out for you. We have a registration form. Back then, that's what we did. And, and I go, but here's what you have to do. The minute they express any interest in the house, anything, like they could say they like the couch, I don't care. What I want you to do is I want you to say this script. And that's all you have to say. And then what I want you to do is not schedule anything for two or three hours after the open house. And I want you to have appointment slots ready after the open house. Can you do that? She goes, yep, I'm all clear, I'm ready to go. I go, great, here's the script. And you guys are gonna die right now. Like, it's so long and complicated. I just feel like you should, you know, get a pen and paper out, and I'm kidding. You're gonna die at the simplicity of the script, and this script will change your life. <laughs> You're gonna go, that's it, that, that, that's it. Here's the script. Great, would you like to meet with me after the open house to write an offer on this home? <laughs> no, I swear to God, you guys, who has, no one asked that question. We get on average one appointment per open house because we use that script. Because we walk in with a mindset that we are in there to do one thing and that is to schedule an appointment after the open house. And we just say to anyone who walks in, certainly after we've micro closed them, we say, great, would you like to set an appointment to write an offer on this house? What normally happens is they laugh or they say no. I don't think this is the house. And then we roll right into perfect. Let's meet and spend a few minutes together just talking about you and your needs and the house search and what you're really looking for. It's called a buyer consultation and it's really brief and you'll love it. Or no problem. I understand this may not be the right house. It sounds like you're actually a seller. Why don't I just pop by your house after the open house and I can go do a walkthrough and we can tell you what you need to do to prep your house for sale should you ever decide to list or I can give you a value. You guys, I am telling you, if you start doing this, you'll, you'll start like texting and messaging Bob. You'll go, oh my God, it works. It's so easy. And the script is great. Would you like to meet with me after the open house to write an offer on this home? That's it. I mean, literally that's it. Like mic drop. And it's so easy. And I think I think what what the foundation of that is 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 going back to the very first slide, which is like most of us go into open houses, and what, what our mindset is is, well, I'm just going to get name and numbers and follow up, right? And by the way, do we get names and numbers and follow up and have success and get clients out of open houses? The answer is yes. But what I know from new construction sales is you have to close. You have to close at that open house, and you have to close and ask for what you want. And the fact is, what we want is an appointment. And, and that's what we need. It's not a lead unless you have an appointment. Here's the other thing I know from years of experience. And my, I'm like sharing this from being a real estate agent, doing everything I'm sharing with you myself and literally every day watching my team members and now my 1300 plus agents and our brokerages do it. So this isn't some like, this isn't hypothetical. This is like tested and, and works, right? And my theory is if anything works in Seattle, we have a super tough consumer, it can work anywhere. But, but what I know is, is that the delta needs to be really short. And this is what I mean. If you set an appointment and it's like within an hour of your open house, the odds of them showing up are way higher than if you set an appointment for the next Wednesday. So the biggest challenge we have is that we overbook ourselves and we don't give ourselves the breathing room after our open houses so we can't do it. And then what happens is they're like, well, do you want to meet tomorrow or Tuesday? I have a four o'clock or, you know, Thursday, or maybe just next weekend. By then, I mean, any of you guys know who've done this a long time, the odds of people showing up are slim to none. And by the way, do we have to do that? Yeah, sometimes we do. It, you know, life's not perfect. But the quicker we can get someone to meet, they're already in their car. They're already out of their comfort zone. If you can stretch that out a little longer, say, hey, tell you what, 
why don't, you know, why don't I, uh, if it's dead as a doornail, you go, why don't we just sit down and meet now? We can sit down and meet now. I'll just, I'll pop up and greet somebody. You know, if it's 3.30 and it's a quiet open house. The point that I want to share with you is, is, is set that appointment and schedule your day so that you have time blocked to make that appointment. Are there any questions? This is a good. Yeah, I, I think via um, that, that, the, the first script, super powerful. And I think, like you said, most people don't go in, like, they don't go in with that number one objective of sell the house, right? So they never ask that question, do you want to make an offer? But Arian asked, can you, and, and I'm, I agree with Arian, can you give me, the, give me that pivot script again, right? Because yeah. a lot of people aren't going to say, yeah, absolutely, we're ready to write an offer. Most of them are going to laugh and say, no. They no, all do. Right. What's that pivot script again? Actually, really quick, I'll give you the pivot script. Do you guys want to hear the, the, the ending to that, that absolutely true real life story? I swear yes. to God. I get, I get a text on the Sunday. And it, I think it was like, I think it was like four o'clock or four 30 and it was Isabel. And she was like, Hey, I have a question for you. Do you have time for a quick call? I'm like, yeah, you bet. So I called her and I go, what's up? And she's like, um, okay, I, you know, this is going to be my first deal. And I was like, Oh my God, you're writing it up. And she's like, well, this is my question. I'm, what do I do when I, when I write two different people up for the same property? Because now I'm meeting with the second group of people and I'm like, wait, you can't, what are you talking about? You, you, can't write, you can't write an offer for two different, I swear to God, we had to get another agent in to write on the property. And the true ending is she didn't get it. We got like six offers and I had to choose another one, but I really, I just want to finish this up. To, so you guys believe me, her first deal happened about six weeks later. And it was using the script. It was a $1.2 million listing. Bob in Woodenville. It was in Woodenville. It was a $1.2 million listing. And she, we double ended it. She, she represented the buyer from an open house using that script. I, I swear to God, that was the first time I was like, oh my. And then I, I've been teaching it ever since. So anyway, okay. So that they, they almost never say that though. What they almost always say is, you know, oh, ha, 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 that's really funny or, you know, whatever they're going to say. So, um, so I, then I pivot into, you know, and this is a little bit more 201 class, which is what I mean. Like, I know everyone wants to kind of get in the weeds of this part. Um, and that's Bob, you're like, how long do you need? I'm like, well, there's a, people have a lot of questions about this stuff, but what I'll say is, is that pivot into whatever script you guys use to get a listing appointment or a buyer consult. What I say is great, Bob. Um, I totally understand. Just thought I'd ask. Let's do this. Why don't we sit down and meet? And there's a Starbucks around the corner. We can sit down here. It's a vacant house, whatever we're going to say. You know, why don't we sit down and meet and talk about your home search and your needs? And let's just look at your, you know, your whole portfolio as a whole. Are, do you have to sell? Do you have to buy? Let's talk about you for 30 minutes. Let's just kind of go through it together and talk about what your needs are and what your wants are. And, um, and, and I think you'll find it really, really useful. Here's what I know about scripts, you guys, and communication, and I teach about communication a lot. Always sell the benefit of the appointment. Always sell the benefit of the appointment. I want that to sink in a minute. So what I don't say is, hey, meet with me for 30 minutes, and I'm going to give, I'm going to give you a buyer consult. What I want to say is, Bob, let's sit down for 30 minutes so that we can give you clarity on your home search and you can understand your path moving forward. See the difference? So if you learn how to communicate in a way that I, I want you guys to always think about, that no one cares what, what you're saying. You guys certainly aren't caring what I'm saying right now. What you care about is if what I'm saying impacts you. What are the benefits to what I'm saying for you? How can you translate what I'm sharing with you to your world, to your business, to make more money, right? So your clients feel the same way and anyone you talk to in life feels the same way. So remember to constantly think in terms of how could I word something so that that 30 minutes is a benefit to them for having gone on it with me. Does that make sense? Do you guys under, let me open the, I want to make sure that I got that point across. No, it's not. I'm not getting a lot of feedback on that one. <laughs> I got a yes. I got, I got a yay, a yes. Well, cause Zach's like, Zach's golden child of the whole, Zach keeps like answering it. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, Julie and Brian. Okay, good. 
Yeah. Okay. Good. I, I just so so we could we could do a whole webinar, right, on on scripts to pivot, and and what we use as scripts to get us listing presentations and buyers. I, I do want to just kind of wrap up. We're only on point three of seven, and this is supposed to end in five minutes. But but I promise you, a lot of this is in two hundred one. And if if you want me to come back, I can come back. Okay. Okay, we're going to move to number four. I know I left you all unsatisfied about number three. I always do that when I rush through this. The, the third, there's so much. 201 really goes more into the, the weeds of that critical path and that sales We'll process. have Via back for 201 in, in either four or six weeks. How, does that work, Via? We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, but we'll get her back here soon enough for We for shall see, Bob. What are you going to do? What have you done for me lately? I don't know. Good question. Let me check my text threads and see if I've done. I'm such before. a tough customer. Bob and I work together. So we, we <laughs> okay. So um, number four, client communication. This is especially important. So for you on the on this webinar that are listing agents, okay, when you are coaching uh, other agents to come do open houses for you, listen to this in this context. Those of you who do open houses for listing agents, listen to it in this context. But listing agents, remember, if you're going to have agents come do open houses for you, please train them with these. Number one, if you are doing an open house for someone and it is not your listing, do not answer any red flag questions. Red flag questions are pricing, marketing, you know, why isn't my home sold? You know, what would you do? What would, you know, how would you market it? You know, what would you price this at? We always edify the listing agent. By edify, I mean we always prop them up. You know what? This is what I know. What I know, Mr. Seller, is Bob Stewart is literally one of the best agents in the area. And if he has priced it and marketed it this way, I have to believe he has a reason for that. And I would talk to Bob about it. He's he's amazing. He's one of the top agents in my office. I mean, that's always going to be my response. Then I'm going to go side chat Bob and go, dude, you're in trouble. This house is overpriced. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm going to tell Bob what's up, but I'm not going to tell the seller. Does that make sense? Okay. 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 This is actually, I'm going to open up the questions really quick because this is super fun. Who here has been in real estate long enough to have that super fun thing happen <laughs> when you show up and the seller won't leave an open house? Oh dun, dun, my dun. god. I know. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, it is so cringing and horrid, right? We've all had it. We have one guy who I swear to God stayed and drank beer. And it, it <laughs> like, you know, you can't make this stuff. If you've done this 17 years, I, you know, I swear to God, the, the stories, we all need to write books, right? Anyway. All right. So if the homeowner stays, we welcome them. We're positive it is their house, you know, and we just kind of use the script, Mr. Homeowner, we found it to be much more successful if the homeowner's not present. Are you okay with that? And then, you know, some of them will say yes, some of them will say no. I and think then the alternative, if they want to stay via, what we do is we put them by the front door and we make them get everybody to sign in. There's been all these questions. What do you do if somebody won't sign in? You just put the homeowner at the door and, and then they say, you're not coming in my house unless you sign in. Well, I right. think that's a great idea. You know, what? one of the things we did with beer drinking guys, we made him put away his beer. And then we said, my, my, it was Michelle, one of my agents, she, she called me in a panic. And she goes, okay, if you're going to stay, anytime someone comes, you're going to act like a buyer. Get off the couch and start looking around and act like a buyer. And it was actually good because there was always someone there. But, you know, we just kind of go into a secondary script, you know. Well, it makes it a lot easier for people to imagine that this is their home, Bob. And when you're present, it makes them feel like they might be invading your home. And we want them to feel neutral, right? So, you know, we try. We put them to work. It's such a cringer. Nobody likes it. The second thing that happens is you have the homeowner that's going to stay till the one, like 12.59, right? And they're going to get there at 3.59. They want to be there for the beginning and the end. And we, you know, we kind of can't help that, but that's when we want to be extra vigilant about red flag questions, right? And I do want to remind you that, you know, your behavior does directly, you know, affect the listing firm. And if you're an agent doing open houses for other agents, you want more open houses. So you want them to, you know, you want them to trust that you're going to say the right thing, right? Don't say things like the seller will take less or, you know, if offers are due on a Tuesday. Don't say things like, oh, the seller would take an early offer. D just careful what you say. I just don't want anyone to get in trouble. Okay. Traffic report. These are a really big deal in my world. Um, this comes from my, my new construction background. Every single open house, we send these out. And I cannot tell you what a game changer these are. Our clients love these. 
Uh, agents that my agent, so agents here who want to get better open houses, if you start sending traffic reports to the listing agents, every time you do an open house for them, they will love you and they will beg you to do more. I'm telling you. Here's what this does for us, you guys, especially the listing agents in the room that are listening. This neutralizes us. We do not edit the comments. Let me repeat. We do not filter and edit comments. So if there are comments that are like, this house smells like cat urine, they stay in. If there are comments like uh, the house is really messy, it was hard to see, we leave that in. We are the messengers. You know, I, I think sometimes as listing agents, we get a little fearful about passing on negative messages that our sellers really need to hear. So when you fill it out as, as a traffic report, it's really, it's like kind of a neutral stance, right? We always, always, please hear me, always underdo interest in the house. What I get a lot when I get these traffic reports from newer agents, they get really excited and they'll say things like, oh my God, I think you're going to get five offers on the house. And like they think five out of seven people were so interested they were going to write an offer. And, and it's just it, it, newer agents, there's nothing wrong with that. It does tend to be a trend I see with newer agents. As you do more of these, you start getting a little bit of a, of a feel <laughs> for the fact that if I had a dollar for everybody who said they were going to write an offer on a home and didn't, I'd be rich, right? I mean, all of you seasoned agents watching totally know that, right? So what we want to do is we want to underplay excitement of the, the property and, and then we want to tell the agent what's up. So I might say, you know, I'm going to do a traffic report. It's like, you know, yeah, there is the, everyone seemed to like the house. They seemed to think it was priced right. Then I'm going to side chat Bob and say, I think you're getting three offers. What I wouldn't want is for the traffic report to look like you're getting three offers. Because what happens is if you get three offers, you're a hero. If, if they get a traffic report that looks like they're getting 10 offers and you get three offers, you're, it's a nightmare, right? Or worst thing that happens is they don't get any offers. So I really try to, I try to neutralize this and not put too much interpretation in here. Right. And just to clarify, Via, this is going to the, you're sending this to the sellers. If you're the listing okay. agent, this we is going to the sellers. We are absolutely sending this to the seller. As a listing agent, I'm sending this to the seller each and every time. If a, an agent's doing an open house for one of my listings, they're sending it to me and I'm editing it and sending it to the seller. I'm neutralizing yeah. it. It's really important that this stays as neutral as possible. Okay. I, I just, I want to be super clear. It's not about trickery. It's not about, you know, um, not being honest with our sellers. It's it, what it's about is just neutralizing. Does yeah, honest, ex you, you want to set realistic expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's yeah. what you're kind of doing. You're, you're taking off the, yeah. the fluff that might make it seem better than it actually is. Yes, Bob, that, that's correct. And and the, this traffic report's super easy. It's usually just emailed, you know, um, we have a Google Drive form, whatever. It's kind of random, you know, we, we put weather, It's weather is a big deal in Seattle. So if we have our, like Mother's Day weekend was our first sunny and hot weekend in a long time, and we had crappy open house traffic. And I really think that was a factor, right? If it's super blustery and rainy, that's a factor. Weather affects open houses here. It may or may not in your market, but you know, it's just, it's just this is just painting a picture it's important for me to paint the picture, especially for our out-of-town sellers, right? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just jumping. Hey, Via, fast. would you like? Is there any way this this we could just get and yeah. share like this template of the report um, later yeah. with the group? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just gonna have to hound me for it because I've already forgotten. Perfect. Okay, really quick. Um, <laughs> do not wear this. Here's the thing. Like when we talk talk about this, I'm not gonna do it on a recorded webinar, but um, I have some funny stories <laughs> when I teach this class in person. I have some funny stories about inappropriate attire. For the sake of speed, <laughs> what I'm gonna say is this is not a nightclub, a beach, or a golf course. People, this is a job interview. It's your job interview. Please dress as if it's a job interview. And we're gonna move on. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot more fun in real life, I'm telling you. Okay, keep going. All right, definitely clean up messes. And I, I know that's obvious, but I just I just want us to take a hot second to slow down, turn all the lights off, you know, for sure. I have almost gotten fired once, twice, almost gotten fired twice because of agents not appropriately locking those stupid, you know, those European doors where you have to turn the freaking handle up and then down and whatever. <laughs> really gotten in trouble with some of our, we, we do a lot of luxury and it's, it's a bigger deal there. I had one break in in an open house because I thought I had secured the lower slider and I hadn't. 
Luckily, the break-in, nothing happened because it was vacant, but it was really scary to me. So I've had three incidences now of not having locked up houses. So I'm like, I'm an animal. Like I like hound my agents. Is it locked up? Is it locked up? Is it locked up? So just don't get in trouble like I did. Um, see, it's in caps. So turn off all the lights and the fireplaces and the heated floors. A lot of the times heated floors are on, on timers. So that's good. Really quick, basic safety. Sorry, I know we're running a little late. Really quick, and this is not a safety class, and I want to preface it by saying I think there's an, a lot of better and, and amazing safety classes, but I am, I just want to run over, I always want to run over safety, right? You know, two is better than one. You know, this is a great way for our lenders to chip in. I get a lot of questions about lenders at open houses, and we kind of go into detail more when, in the long form version of this class, but your lender's best role is not to sit there and try to convert everybody into a loan app. The best way they can help you is to help you get people to register when you're really busy and to help you get an appointment because they know that you will refer them every once in a while. See, I don't like a lender coming on hard at an open house. I think their best role is as a helper for us because we're going to give them all the leads. Every once in a while, they'll go in and bond with someone and they'll get a loan app. No problem. It's fine. But I hate those lenders that have commission breath that show up at our open houses and, and try to hard close every single one of my clients because then it ruins it for me. So the best thing they can do is help you convert, okay? All right, sorry, got on my got on my little high horse there. Um, check your cell phone strength, make sure it works. Usually we can text if we can't talk, just know what you're dealing with, know if there's a room or a basement where it doesn't work. I know this is gonna sound paranoid, but I'm wired a little paranoid. Get, you know, kind of know what your, what your escape route is. You know, one example is, don't run out to a backyard that's completely fenced that doesn't have a gate, <laughs> you know, where you're, you're trapped in the backyard, right? Uh, I do not like to get boxed into rooms. And so I always try to walk behind my customers. You know, I never want to, I never want to get locked in a room, right? Um, I have had a couple situations where I have not been comfortable either because of a geographic location or because of someone and, and I'll do a quick text and say, hey, check in with me. If I don't check in with you in 20 minutes, you know, this is the address I matter. I'm pretty, I'm wired to kind of like do a lot of check-ins and be pretty careful with this. So I would like you to too. Um, also, um, want to make sure that you guys, you know, park your cars in a way that, you know, you could kind of quickly exit. I now have one of those keyless cars. So I do tend to, when I go hide my purse, I keep my key with me. So if I have to walk out of a house, and by the way, if you have any suspicion, ladies especially, you walk out of that house and leave everything open and go. I, I you do not hesitate. Follow your gut. Too many times I have read stories and, and agents kept not following their gut. Right. With that said, I've never really been stressed about open houses because they're publicly advertised. I think what 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 the big safety talk should be on is Internet showings, you know, meeting people that we don't know. Typically in an open house, you know, I, someone could walk in at any time. And so I think I, I have not been that stressed about open houses, but I do think that it's. I think it's something that we need to talk about. And so I kind of put it in here. So Antonio said, what was that last? You you ran past one. I think what it said was make sure everybody's left at the end was the bullet. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. Back. That's all right. Just empty, the, yeah. empty the house. Make sure you're not leaving behind some yes, sly little person who hid in the bathroom, right? Correct. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, I kind of went fast. Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know where it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. That's all she wrote. Deep breath. That was you banged through this. There's a bunch of questions here. I mean, Via, usually, uh, usually that's a two hour class, you guys. Sorry. I like really skimmed. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, but, but, and Chelsea brings up a good point. You, you kept saying I'm, I'm paranoid. I don't think you're paranoid. Like, I don't think anybody thinks you're paranoid. I think, you know, no, no, no uh, open house and, and sale of a house is worth like putting yourself in a precarious position, right? So it's not paranoid. Yeah, and you guys know that the law enforcement codes, you know, code red, code yellow, code green or whatever. I I typically am wired, like I'm kind of code yellow. Like I'm pretty much 70% of the time, I'm pretty aware of my surroundings. I rarely let myself get into like space out mode, although I do sometimes. So I'm definitely code yellow and that that just me at an open house and that just means like I'm super aware of my surroundings and I've got an antenna up. That's all. That's all yeah. I mean. 
aware. Randy said aware and realistic. I think that's smart. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'm not in law enforcement. I don't have a background, so like it's probably worded. That's probably the appropriate wording. I like via talk is you know I'm just aware of my surroundings and I have a situational awareness. But yes, yeah, Susan, I love that. I've actually taken a picture of people's um, license plates in front of them for an internet showing, and I've said, oh, I'm just going to text that to my office really quick. <laughs> Literally, like I like obviously, you know, like I don't even hide that I'm doing that. Yeah. So I think that's totally. great. Can you? So th there's this question's probably been asked twelve times. What do you do when somebody refuses to sign in? Have you have you dealt with them? I'm just assuming you you've dealt yeah. with that. Like what what's your what all do you time. do in that scenario? Yeah, all the time. So so that's why I like to have a second line of defense, right? So you know, it, it some <laughs> registration is literally its own topic. I, I mean. How people register at open houses is, is a whole thing. You know, one method of registration is to not ask anyone up front. And as you're doing a house presentation, you're, you're kind of writing things down. Like, what did you say your first name was? Bob, great. Hey, Bob, what, I wanted to get back to you now. What did you say your cell phone number is? Great, and then, you know, and I'm gonna get your information as I go. That's one way to do it. One way to do it, tr traditionally, we've always had the iPad up. We do not get 100% registration. And, you know, Seattle's a lot of high tech. I don't know. A lot of people here are super into privacy, and it's just Seattle's its own market. It's odd at times. And so, I mean, we do get that. And I just try to bond with them and to connect with them so that I can get that secondary registration. And guess what, you guys? I don't always win. It's a numbers game. This is math. You know, I move on. I mean, if someone's going to be hostile and they're not going to register with me and, you know, I'm probably not going to spend that much time with them. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm a salesperson. I'm not going to give up right away. I am going to try. But you know what? I, there's just too many fish in the sea for me to try to fight. Do I really want to follow up with someone who's an a-hole? <laughs> Can I love to say that on a webinar? <laughs> yes. Yes. You can say a-hole. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I know it's probably not a great answer, but I mean, I try, I really try to work for that secondary, you know, bonding and connection. And I really try to be a value. My um, communication wise, I, I'm constantly trying to focus on, you know, how can I best serve them? How can I be a value to them? How would they view this interaction as valuable? You know, are they getting a benefit out of being with me right now? So when I have those filters, you know, my, my dialogues are really geared towards them. And, you know, it's dropping truth bombs and dropping um, some fear bombs a little bit sometimes when I'm in sales. I'll be like, you know, I, if you don't really have an agent that you're really, really tight with, that you're in partnership with, that's, you know, on top of the market, knows the market, walking you through step by step, you know, maybe we should sit down and talk about how I sell homes. You know, I mean, that's the kind of dialogue I might be having with someone. And when I'm starting to have that dialogue, they're going to not only register with me, I'm going to set an appointment. So I don't know. It just depends on the person. The, so Jennifer says, but if you use the seller requires registration line on them and then they refuse, do you turn them away at the door? My mom is a hard ass. Like my mom, she will turn people away at the door. Um, and and her, her, her thing is, like, and she uses that script, right? The seller requires that we have everybody sign in. If it's for the safety of the agent, for the safety of the belongings in the home, right? And if they're not willing to do it, she'll turn them away. The reality is most people are like, okay, fine, I'll register. And they just put in fake information. That's They're fine, putting Mickey right? Mouse in, no problem. Yeah, yeah. like whatever. But um, she she has absolutely turned people away. And her feeling is whatever. They're, like, they, they're an a-hole. They weren't going to buy this house. That they, they like why yeah. are they even here anyway right and so for her it's not it, it, it has never been like a big deal but she's a hard ass right she's willing to do that and, and some people may have fear of, of doing that like i don't know what you'd be fearful of exactly them getting mad but um you know your seller is going to get mad if you let somebody come through there and, and also well, obey, obey gail the open house ninja if that's what gail does do it i I've, i have refused people like at, at luxury listings i've refused people flat out refused them and i've checked the registration uh, at a run out of the mill open house, I um all you know I, I usually say you know what just uh, just toss in your name you know and um you know and, and just plug in plug in some placeholders. I do need to know that you are here. It's really important. It just depends. It just depends. I, I could lie to you and act like I'm all dialed in and like I, I don't know. It just depends. <laughs> uh, 
I, what Susan has a great question and I'll, I'll answer via like what, what I know some of the folks on the Ben Kinney teams do. And then you, you can tell me if you've got a different way to approach this, but she says, what if, what if somebody says they already have an agent? Like, what do you say oh, to that? Oh, oh. Okay. go ahead. What, what, what's your, what's your script or what's your retort? If they, they say, Oh, I've already got an agent. I have rules about that. Okay. Remember when we went back to LP mama, remember LP mama, hold on, yep. let me go back, let me go back. Hold on. What is this doing? Why isn't this? Somebody had asked the question earlier too. What does LP Mama? What, what yeah, does yeah. that mean? So we'll we'll see that on her slide here. It, it kind of lays it out. Okay. Here is LP Mama. LP Mama is your discovery. It's like a framework and a model for you know essentially micro scripts, if you will. LP Mama is sort of life. <laughs> LP Mama is life. You see how I have optional under agent. I never, ever ask anybody if they're working with an agent. This is controversial. I'm just sharing with you what me and my highly successful team have done for a long time. I don't ask because the fact is if I can close them for an appointment and they want to meet with me, they don't have an agent. The secondary thing is this. If someone proactively brings up their agent and I know them or, or it's it, it two or three times they're like they're they're bringing up their agent by name and they're clearly actively in the process I pass on them it's just not I'm not going to go there so they have to bring it up proactively to me a few times for me to believe it and and I still might try to close on the appointment but you know I don't I, I there it's just numbers you got I don't know I I don't I don't go for it I certtainly don't ask them because if you ask them now, now you're stuck with the answer you don't want. It's like walking into a department store and, and you know, I'm there for red pants and the gal says, can I help you? And I automatically, what do I say? I say, no, it's stupid. Why do I say no? I actually need help. But I think <laughs> no. It's weird. So, I don't know. That's the, I, do. uh, I know that um, you, you can ask them their name. If they say I have an agent, if they if they bring it up, oh that's awesome. Maybe I know them. What's their name? If they mumble stumble, uh, th then the next thing would would be to say, oh that sounds like maybe you 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 don't actually have an agent. You've been you've been um, getting listings from somebody, or you signed up on a website, right? So just ask them their name. Well, that's why I don't ask. See, here's the thing about that. I I think that's a great script, and 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 I have been in situations where I'm like, now what did you say the name of your agent was? With that said, that script doesn't work if you don't ask. So if they are bringing up their agent, pro then I might say, let's say that, yeah, I'm working with an agent, I'm working, oh, okay, you know, um, who are you working with? You know, it, then I might go into what's their name, but they have to proactively be one, the ones to bring it up. And then I did just check questions. Susan, Susan asked, what if they say they already have an agent, do you have a script for that? You know, if if I'm doing a walkthrough and they're vaguely talking about their agent and it is clear to me that we are bonding and vibing and I, and I, you know, I'm a better match for them, I'll still try to close in the appointment. What I'll say, Susan, is, you know, have you signed a, a buyer rep agreement with them? You know, have you signed a listing agreement with them? Which, of course, I would honor. I would never. I mean, I, of course, I would honor that. But you know what? 90% of the time they haven't. Yeah. So, then I'm going to close. But that's 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 who I am. I mean, I'm a salesperson, and I have a mortgage to pay. And then she says something like, "Well, that was really silly of your agent to send you over here to the open house with being hosted by the best agent in town." Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with a trained killer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so th th there's probably ten other questions in here, great ones that that we didn't get to. I'm I'm going to um, take this time to kind of wrap up via thank you so much this was um amazing and you know you said um i don't know what you said in the beginning you called it the basics or you know the, the very mm -hmm. kind of the foundation that elementary but the reality is i think most people aren't doing the basics very well um and if we just took a couple of these basics like that script and guys look, so here's the deal recording it, it'll be coming out to you tomorrow okay um, Via agreed to share the the PDF version of these slides, so we'll mm -hmm. we'll get that included with the recording. There was that traffic report uh, template, and we're going to share that in the Brevity Masterminds group. I may try to get that um, added with the recording as well. And then I don't have a definitive date yet for for 201, but man, there's been an, 50 or 60 of you guys that have asked about 201 in the questions. So we will get that scheduled in, in the next you know, four weeks, six weeks, somewhere in that time frame. hopefully based on Via's 
um, willingness to, to share her time with us again. And Via, thank you. This was really awesome. I, I learned stuff. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. Thank you. This is awesome. Yeah, thank Thanks. you for having me. It was awesome. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Everyone was super interactive. I like that. Yeah, love it. All right, you guys go have uh, an awesome rest of your week in real estate. On behalf of Via, who just crushed it, we've got our folks behind the scenes who have been answering questions for you guys. Have an awesome week, everybody. My name is Bob Stewart for Brevity. Bye-bye.